Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Distillation column, how to select the distillation column operating pressure. In this video course, you will learn why is the distillation column pressure important, what design inputs are required to decide the pressure, the steps involved in deciding the column operating pressure, a worked example to strengthen your understanding. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Column operating pressure is an important parameter in distillation process. It has an impact on vapor liquid equilibrium, relative volatility, cost of utility and the cost of column itself. Hence, selecting the operating pressure of the column is an important decision in the design of a distillation column. The steps involved in the selection of distillation column operating pressures are given in the below chart in sequence. Decide on the column specifications, finalize the cooling medium and its temperature, decide the condensing temperature, calculate the operating pressure. The first step in the design of distribution column to specify the design objective. The usual design objective of column is to separate a given feed into distillate and bottom streams of specified compositions. The feed is specified in terms of pressure, temperature, the feed flow rate and its composition. The distillate product is specified by the composition of the light key component that is the product purity required by design. The bottom product is specified by the maximum light key component composition that is impurity that can be accepted at the bottom. Once the column top and bottom stream specifications in terms of compositions are fixed, the next step is to determine the dew point of the vapor at the top and bubble point of the liquid at the bottom. Calculation of dew point and bubble point needs K value and the operating pressure at the top and bottom of the column. To condense a vapor at a given pressure and temperature, you need cooling medium at a lower temperature. So the temperature of the available cooling medium is key to decide the operating pressure. The operating pressure should be selected in such a way that it provides sufficient temperature difference between the cooling medium or the utility and the condensing temperature of vapor at the overhead, that is the dew point. There are several cooling media available to choose from. Some of the commonly used cooling medium are water at ambient temperature, refrigerant and air. From economic point of view, it is usual engineering practice to use cooling water as utility for condensers if available at the plant locations. In places where water availability is a concern, air can be considered as the cooling medium. The cooling water temperature varies from one season to another throughout the year. The temperature will be higher in the summer and hence the cooling water or air temperature in the summer is taken for condenser design. The figure below shows the distillation column with condenser and reboiler system. Assume that the cooling water temperature of the inlet to the condenser is 35 degrees centigrade. To provide adequate driving force for the heat exchange in the condenser, the condensing overhead vapor temperature should be a minimum of 45 degrees centigrade. You have to vary the column top pressure in such a way that the saturation vapor pressure at the condenser inlet corresponds to 45 degrees centigrade. This brings you to the question, how to find the vapor pressure of a mixer 
at the condensing temperature. The condensing pressure is the total vapor pressure of the liquid mixer at the condensing temperature. To calculate the vapor pressure of the organic liquid mixer, the vapor pressure of the individual components of the liquid mixer has to be determined first. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec eLearn channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career-oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. The vapor pressure of the organic liquids and hydrocarbons can be determined from the anti equation given below. Log to the base 10 P sat equal to A minus B divided by T plus C. Where A, B and C are constant in the vapor pressure equation. T is a temperature in degree centigrade. P sat is a vapor pressure at temperature T in mmHg. Having calculated the component vapor pressures, you can proceed to calculate the partial pressure of individual components. According to Raoult's law, the partial pressure of the component is the product of pure component vapor pressure and its mole fraction in the liquid. The total pressure of the liquid mixer is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of its components. For example, if the overhead vapor contains three components A, B and C, the column top operating pressure is Pt equal to Pa plus Pb plus Pc, where Pa, Pb and Pc are partial pressures of components A, B and C. Deciding on column pressure and exercise. Let me now walk you through an exercise so that you will have a better understanding of the calculation method. Problem statement. A petrochemical plant has installed a distillation column to separate C4 plus, that is butane plus heavier fractions from a propane feed stream. The overhead vapor from the column is to be condensed with cooling water using a total condenser. The composition of the overhead vapors given in the attached table. Cooling water as utility is available at 38 degrees centigrade. Determine the condensing pressure of the overhead vapor of the distillation column. Given in the table below are the mass flow rates and mole fractions of the distillation column overhead vapor flowing to the condenser. For example, the mole fraction of propylene is 0 0.0094 and that of propane is 0 0.9778. Given in the table below are the constants in the Andoyan equation for calculating the saturation pressure of the given mixer. For ethane, the values of A, B and C are 6.813, 659.7 and 256.431 respectively. For propane, the values are 6.858, 819.3 and 248.73 respectively. For propylene, the values are 6.85, 795.8, respectively. Given in the table below are the vapor pressures computed using the Andoyan constants. From the vapor pressure and mole fraction, the partial pressure of the components are calculated. For example, the calculated vapor pressure of propylene is 19.45 bar and the partial pressure is 0.182 bar. The vapor pressure of propane is 16.66 bar and its partial pressure is 
296 bar. The total pressure or the condensing pressure of the water vapor is the sum of the partial pressures of all the components. The calculated condensing pressure is 16.6 bar absolute. The pressure at the top of the column must be equal to this for the overhead vapor to condense. At this pressure, the dew point of the temperature will be 45 degrees centigrade. Hence, the operating pressure of the column at the top is 16.6 bar absolute. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.